this video I'll talk about core ground test or core ground insulation insulation resistance test. So this test is is a is another important test. It's a low it's a low voltage low current test. It's non-destructive, but it's really critical. Uh, so this test basically when it's performed it checks the core ground insulation if the transformer core ground or core is grounded internally to perform this internally to the tank to the tank then you need to have access to remove the ground connection uh, large transformers typically the core ground is uh, you know is brought out is brought out to to a bushing you know that's mounted on the tank cover at the top then all you need to do is uh, you remove the jumper because you know you have the tank kind of this is the cover you're, you're looking at from the top so you have the kind of the bushing of the core so internally you bring the core ground uh, to the bushing then you take this bushing terminal and you ground it, you connect it to the ground. Now, if you want to perform this test, all you need to do is remove this jumper here between the bushing and the ground. And you, but if, if, if it's grounded internally, unfortunately, you cannot perform this test. And to perform this test, you know, you have to get inside the transformer uh, and remove that jumper. And that might require uh, lowering the oil or draining oil so it's, it's it becomes a very laborious uh, process you know so but larger large transformers typically this the ground the core ground is brought out through a bush and then it's grounded externally rather than internally so then what you do you apply a DC voltage from the core strap to ground and I'll show what I mean by that for large transformers you may apply 500 to 1000 volt DC for one minute but again any test you perform you have to make sure you do not exceed the width stand of the apparatus that you are testing always you have to make sure you don't exceed that because if you can if you can only take say like 400 volts you cannot apply a thousand you know you're going to cause damage so but for large transformers, typically 500 to 1,000 volt DC uh, will be applied. And it's applied for one minute. So again, you need to be mindful of withstand of core insulation. This is not just for the core. Anytime you apply test, you want to make sure you understand, okay, how, how much voltage can I apply? How, you know, if, you know and you, if you don't know you have to consult with the manufacturer ask them like okay how do I perform the test you know like how much voltage can I apply without causing any damage so measure the resistance should be very high for a new transformer measure the resistance should be greater than 500 mega ohms for large transformers typically it's, it's like in the order of giga ohm so it's more than one giga ohm but at least 500 mega ohms but then what you can do if you have a test report from the factory you can check what it tests at the factory if it goes below that then probably you want to consult with the manufacturer see okay is this acceptable you know so you have again I took these pictures from the from this side and this side so you have this here shows here is the core core limb one so number one, two, this is a three limb core. Then you have the top yoke, the bottom yoke that connects the three limbs together. Then you have the frame that kind of keeps the laminations together so they don't collapse. So typically manufacturer, what they would do, they would insert, because these are laminations, so they will stick uh, a, some kind of conductor, typically like aluminum, aluminum strap. So they would insert it in between the laminations because the laminations are insulated because you don't want to uh, short the laminations. So then, you know, imagine the, let's assume the, the tank is covered here and you have a core bushing, for instance. 
So you would bring this strap and the bush and there's a conductor inside because we don't want to uh, cause any, we don't want this, uh, the core ground uh, conductor to touch the any ground point like the tank because the tank will be grounded. Then you take this and you ground it. So to perform this test, you have to remove that ground. So basically what you do, you apply DC voltage from, sorry, DC positive, negative. So this is DC voltage. So you connect it to the strap after you remove the ground connection because everything has to be isolated from the ground. So there is, in, in a sense, there is a, an open circuit from the, from the core to ground, there is no connection, so it's it's open circuited. Then the other the other negative side, you just connect it to your ground. So basically, you apply voltage. It's going to go through the core, but the core is not connected to anything, so it's an open circuit. If the insulation is perfect, you know you're going to apply voltage. You're going to measure current. It should give you, by Ohm's law, it should give you resistance. So that resistance should be very, very high. Again, like I was saying, just to give you an idea, uh, more than 500 mega ohms for uh, new transformers, because as transformers age, insulation de degrades and you might go uh, down a little bit. But typically, and large transformers, really, it's going to be larger than one giga ohm probably. But this is just to give you an idea. It depends on the on the transformer size, design, so on and so forth. But it's good to give you kind of what you are looking for. So because basically what you're testing, you have the core, you know, from that strap, it's connected to DC, and you have the tank, for instance. So the tank is the tank itself is grounded, but the core is not connected to anything, so it's isolated. Then this is here, basically it's connected to ground, so current will flow when you apply voltage, but there's an open circuit, but we know insulation is not perfect, so some current uh, will, will flow, you know, but it's going to be very small if, it's, if nothing is inten unintentionally grounded. So basically what this test is good for it checks for the integrity of the core ground insulation it's a really good uh, test but again you have to be able to access the core ground if it's not externally if it's not brought out externally to a bushing and you have to remove that ground uh, that uh, ground connection so you can basically you, you want the core to be connected not connected to, to the ground you know such that it's basically an open circuit. Theoretically speaking, it's an open circuit. And only if some, something shifted during like shipping, the core somehow got shifted because it's going to be shipped on a track if it's a small transformer or on a train or if it's moved from one location to another, you're going to have a heavy hauler probably move it on a low uh, uh, trailer probably. And things will ha will happen during the shipping, you know. And if the core somehow became connected to ground, you know, and intentionally, this test hopefully will catch that, you know. And for large transformers, some manufacturers or or the or if the end user, they can say, I want the core, not only the core ground to be brought up to a bushing, but also bring the frames, isolate them from the ground. They they should not be connected touching the tank basically because this assembly will be sitting on the tank bottom you know on the bottom of the tank but they should be in isolated or insulated from the tank because the tank is grounded so it's a ground point then bring this out through a bushing that way if there's an issue during commissioning or or just a routine maintenance uh, commissioning you can test a core to make sure it's not somehow, you know, it's not grounded or there's no issue. And you can also test the frames, you know, the core frames, core clamps and so on and so forth. Make sure they are not, somehow they're not connected to ground because, you know, that way you can isolate where the problem is, you know. Thank you.